Yeah, it is another episode of the Autumn Windbags. RJ Clifford, Juan Soto. Let's have some fun today. Special day. Here, we're recording. Oh. Wednesday night. You notice the hats? Same color, different logo. Your Los Angeles Doyers are the 2024 World Series champions. And they're going to give us something that Raiders never do. Some fucking hardware. Great feeling. Fantastic feeling. Dude, they, these guys were at, at the gym were like, oh, man, they should win it at home. They never win it at home. And I'm like, I don't care where they win it. Yeah. It's like, just just get it over as soon as you can because you just, you just never know what's going to happen. And, uh, man, now all those haters – can suck it. I'm gonna fucking shoot my tequila straight. You can lick the salt off my balls. Yeah, haters. man. Just win the. Let's just get the hardware, dude. You know, the like World War II generals are like, oh man, it's it sucks that we had to win this war in Berlin. Wish we could have won it at home. Fuck, dude. Just win. Or, 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 or even like, oh, you won the freaking like mini season World Series. Okay, well now it's a whole World yeah. Series against the best team, the best team in the AL. Yeah. The Dodgers know how to win in COVID years, in normal years, away at home. Yeah, you name you name the scenario, the Dodgers will win a World Series in it. I, frequently, I I would tell people, dude, that was the longest playoffs anyone's ever played. Just because the yep. season wasn't long doesn't I mean you, you, they had to go through an extra team to get there. All right, let's fucking. I'm going. Uh, I'm going just standard issue, Jameson, and I'm going with the uh, American flag with a bullet Ooh, I fucking the whole thing up. Oh well, you have to drink it. You can't waste. I got the the glass of soul. The big I'll bottle. Some, I'll see some Spanish from Chavez this. Ravine. I haven't had this since Bob the Plug last Tequila. time they won the World Series. Yeah. I haven't had it since then. So this is this I only pair this tequila with hardware from the state that my family's from. This is an actual boot. This is like the, the fucking sickest shot glass I own. Mexico meets America. What's more Dodgers than that? Salud. Fernando Valenzuela, this was for you, buddy. Ooh. Victory. Tastes good. Sweet, sweet victory. Um, full another disclosure. reminder. Full disclosure. I've um Okay. Nothing but nothing but truth this, here. This is my fourth one. Because I took one with Homegirl, and then I took one with my family. And I took one with my Dodger buddies. And I took another one with my family. We, we almost there. recorded this before the game. Oh, I would have told you and to then, fuck off. And then today we we're like, all right, hold on, let's just let's just let's wait till after. <laughs> yeah, we almost recorded we it. Did. Or be great move. <laughs> this is another yeah. reminder. Like that fifth inning, the Yankees just would not stop shooting themselves in the foot with all those errors and like fucking catcher interference, balls fall, falling off of gloves. Like I always say, man, like people don't cover first, like even at the highest level. The Yankees, maybe the most like storied sports franchise in America, with the deepest pockets, the great like history, all the resources in the world, in the World Series at home, even they can just fuck up, even they can just blow yeah. a game for them. That's what I'm yeah. saying about like this team, dude. Like just discipline alone. Like if we can just not have the turnovers, not have the penalties, just discipline alone, we could win a lot of games. Just by not oh, yeah. shooting ourselves in the foot. So I watched some tape, and uh, there was a lot of disturbing calls. There's a lot of like things that the calls were, are coming from inside the house. Yeah, That's there were a lot of uh, things that bugged me as far as Getsy's play calling. Mm -hmm. But this is a very small but. I have Girl not boy. seen i have not seen this is like a taylor swift but this i have not seen so many linemen offensive linemen get beat cleanly on run blocks mm -hmm. in my life the i i saw i just guys just getting blown off the ball mm -hmm. guys having the angle a guy's on your inside shade and 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 the defender's able to get to your outside shoulder i don't know how that is 
-hmm. if you're already he's already inside of you there's no way he should be able to cross your face it happened multiple times so i'm not saying that the the bulk of the of the blame or 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 focus shouldn't be on the play calling because the play calling isn't great but you can call the best plays if you're blocking like that not too many of those great plays are going to work i want to clip out you saying he's already inside of you and just like pull that by itself and use it as God a bump. Damn it. <laughs> i'm like just trying to like as good as i feel right now i'm just imagining the raiders winning the super bowl and what that feeling would be like like this times a thousand you know what i mean Dude, look I'm just trying my, to like put them together i text my cousin the the usc one and he's he's you know a few years older than he's like probably 10 years older than me and so he's 64 yeah something like that and he's like these guys are unwatchable like the raiders these guys are unwatchable they're just like yeah. Because, I mean, he played football. He played baseball, too. He played baseball at SC. But he played football. He was a quarterback coach, offensive coordinator in high school, I think, in college, too. So he's he knows the game. And he's telling me all this stuff. And, and we're going back and forth. And he's like, if I, if they don't get rid of these guys, I can't watch them anymore. They're unwatchable. The, what the, the, the decisions they're making, it's unwatchable. And I said, dude, you, you can't choose who you root for. You know what I'm saying? Like if, mm -hmm. if two teams are playing and like you don't care about either one of them, you're going to find one to root for over the other. It's just the way things work. And you, you can't in your inside, you can't not root for the team that you grew up rooting for. And I text him after the Dodgers won. I said, this is why you root for the, your team when it's shitty. Mm -hmm. This is why you root for the Rupert Murdoch years. This is why you root for the fucking, I don't even want to fucking say his name. That carpet bagger from out east that came over here and got divorced and all that crazy madness. This is why you root for your team when it's when you're low because it feels that much better when you win. Mm -hmm. And you were that you know in your mind you were there the whole time. So this is why we still continue to root for our Raiders. He does have a he does have a good point though. Like every week I'm hearing like how many great games are in the afternoon window and I'm watching in Rams. Raiders like piss all over each other. Oh, and then God. this Sunday I'm gonna be watching Bengals Raiders when there's all these great matchups and but you I mean that's that's why we do it, right? Like this that's the sacrifices made. Uh well speaking of uh embarrassing, Sports Kedia um had this report. League sources have blasted offensive coordinator Luke Getze and tell me he is responsible for the poor play of the unit he oversees. The inconsistency of quarterbacks Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew has reminded many of Getze's past. The prior two seasons, Getze held the same position with the Chicago Bears and was bashed for his inability to develop Justin Fields, a 2021 first-round pick. The team traded the Pittsburgh Steelers this offseason for a sixth-round pick. Now, there's tons of blame to go around for where this Raiders season is going. Plenty of blame to go around. Offensive line has always been terrible. They could not put together a good quarterback room, could not put together a good wide receiver or uh, running back room. Um, the magic that we saw late Last season under Antonio Pierce, where the turnovers went our way, we didn't have any penalties. Like that's what Mark Davis has always been an issue. Like these are a lot of issues, right? I can if I could point to the worst thing this season, it's probably offensive coordinator Luke Getzi. If I could say what's the biggest, biggest failure individually, and of course he doesn't have a lot to work deal with, right? Doesn't have great quarterbacks, doesn't have great running backs, doesn't have good offensive line. But there are things you can control and there are things you can't control. And you can't control being creative. You can't control not bashing your head against the wall in the run game when you're getting 1.1 yards per carry. You can change things up. You can not be stuck to a game plan that you had at the beginning of the preseason and it's clearly not working and you're still sticking to it. That's what's most frustrating is remember like week week four, we cut, was it? Week three or four, we kind of ran the ball semi decent and we're like applauding. Oh, he did a couple wide receiver end arounds. Oh, man, that's great. That's so happy. It's like, are we doing, are we throwing a fucking parade? Because he finally did one not that creative, creative thing to address the worst thing that we're doing. Like, I, I, that's how low the bar I set in my brain. Where I like, giving Trey Tucker the ball on an end around, it was like, oh, 
Hallelujah. What a genius. Here's, here's the issue that I have with that. I'm all for widening out the defense, right? Mm -hmm. Just so we don't just try to pound the ball in between the guards, which is basically what we do almost every single running play. I'm all for that. But I'm also for the same action, but don't run the ball. Mm -hmm. And we don't do that. And that's the issue that I have. Whenever he does something funky, it's going to be a run instead of a fake reverse where the fake, the, 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 like a jet sweep uh, where the slot receiver goes and, and, and they fake it to him and he runs a route. Th this is the issue that it's, it's just so stale and predictable. And even when they try to be more innovative and more creative, it still falls flat because there's no compliment to it. And Getsy doesn't have the benefit of coming in with a great track record, right? Like, all right, pass game coordinator for the Packers when they had Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Like, you could have been. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers was the pass game coordinator his last fuck, 10 years there. Okay, so let's just relax. Yeah, Nathaniel Hackett wasn't even the offensive court. You know what I mean? Like, it was all Aaron Rodgers. And of course, he had Devontae Adams in his prime to throw to. And then he went to the Chicago Bears, and we all know how unsuccessful that was, right? Justin Fields played terrible. You know, they, they got run yardage because they just committed to it. It wasn't like it was anything too, like, brilliant, right? And so you're not coming in here with the, like, hey, trust me, guys. Trust me. I've Just give it time, and it'll work. Like, you don't have that resume. You didn't come in here with that. You had to prove your – you have to prove yourself right away. Like, even um, even Antonio Pierce – like it's his, technically his first season as head coach. You give him, I'm not going to say a wide berth, right? You don't give him a ton of rope, but you're like, you know, okay. You're still learning on the job. You were brought in because of your intangibles. Clearly you're not, you know, he shouldn't be this bad at game management, but we knew you weren't going to be great at game. Like even with him, it's like you give yourself some curiosity and a little, and a little bit more time than others because they're brand new and you're letting him grow in that. Luke gets, he's been in the league a while. Been offensive coordinator before. Yeah. Never produced anywhere. Yeah, it's just um it's starting to become very clear. And you know, I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bash AP too much for not saying what we want or what we're saying or what a lot of people want him to say, because he is saying what he should say. Yeah, the play calling. He said it today. The play calling needs to get better. I'm still committing. I'm still committed to Luke Getze because a decision hasn't been made to change yet. Yeah. Um, so he's still committed to him until he's not right. So he, but he did say, yeah, the play calling needs to get better, and so does the execution. And he's right on both accounts. The issue that I'm having is you can't tell me that Jackson Powers Johnson isn't an upgrade from the guard that we had last season. Mm -hmm. so when we did have our full starting when we didn't have it for long we had it from like two games before Mumford went down and then, then Parham went down I think Parham practiced limited today but we, we're still having issues running the ball last season we were running the ball better towards the end of the season and it wasn't anything you know my earth shattering that we were doing that's why I don't know whether it's that the the zone blocking scheme that just isn't working for these guys, um, the down and distance, maybe the formations. It just seems to me like it's very obvious. That's probably the best word to describe a Luke Getzey offense. It's very obvious. It's very obvious what we're trying to do on a specific play by the formation and by the personnel. And if we can pick it out, then uh, you know. The, the defense can't too man it's hot in here too many shots that's just the tequila well that's uh well look i i think they make a change after the bye week we got the yeah, Bengals I mean, so, on sunday I, I think, I and then we got the bye week yeah right? so i think mean, during the bye week like one day tuesday they make the change for install like, wednesday unless something crazy happens sunday no there's nothing right? that's, that's, no, unless no. there's something crazy i just they're, they're i think they make it because there's we've got three former offensive coordinators on the staff like this it's not you know it's not like we're like oh man well he's bad but who are we gonna replace him with we got, we got guys that can try 
not going to say still Philbin. Joe Philbin can go in there and do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying they're definitely going to be better, but we got, but you can give him a shot, right? So I think uh, his play calling days are are over after after Sunday, and, and rightfully so. He doesn't have this season. He didn't prove it in previous seasons on other teams. He didn't prove it. Like he has proven nothing, right? It's it's easy come, easy go. And also for AP, he's got to like distance himself from some of this stuff too. Yeah, that's what that's one of the things. Oh, one of the things that he's really burying himself. He keeps saying the same things over and over again, and I, I can understand from the perspective of he just he doesn't want to say anything, so he'll just say a very generic line, which he says, "Yeah, we got to be physical. We got to be a power running team. We got to be you know this and that." And he just it, and it doesn't seem like this team is built that way, or this offensive line is is built that way maybe a change at the play call maybe a, pay, a, a a a new a new eye can help but uh you know he, he never really answers any questions if you if you notice he just kind of gives a canned answer to everything which is i mean what the good ones do i guess right um mm -hmm. and but it's just it, it's not a very good look for him to continue to preach what isn't working in the offense and have have push it on the offensive coordinator mm -hmm. right because like yeah the issues we're having is running the ball up the middle we're having the issues blocking and running the ball power football and that's exactly what ap says he wants to do all right well then is it getsy that's the problem or is it ap that's pounding it like we need to do this so he's leaving that door a little bit open for some discussion but the people inside the, the building they know what's going on it just uh maybe that's just him being a being a bro and not letting your guy uh out out stranded in the in, in the wind i guess but i don't know man it's not a good look for him i'm trying to think of like what's the face of this poor game management of the raiders like, what's it look like? It looks like this guy. <laughs> Matt, I was I was looking this up. I'm like, who is the game? Like, who's that? Antonio Pierce has a million like contracted guys, coordinators, assistant coaches, assistant assistant coaches, assistant analytic assistant coach. Like, he's got a small army of staff. Matt Sheldon, game management, 21 years experience in coaching for the University of Minnesota. This guy looks like a nerd in the nerdery. That's supposed to have the metrics and the data and the science and the math. Like, all right, it's fourth and three with 321 left and one timeout. You have a 47% chance of converting if you do this, right? That, that, that's what who this guy should be. He is either the dumbest motherfucker on earth who's just collecting a paycheck or Antonio, Br Antonio Pierce never listens to him because some of the game management decisions have been absolutely awful. And I'm just like, it just feels like a defensive minded head coach going with his gut. That's what it feels like. It's like, oh, it just doesn't feel right. Let's, I'll trust the defense. I'll trust our defense. There's no way this guy is telling Antonio Pierce to burn timeouts before the two minute warning. There's no way he's telling Antonio or AP run it multiple times with, you know, under two minutes when you can still score because you don't want to give. Patrick Mahomes enough time like no way there's no it, looking at this guy if you're Antonio Pierce do you listen to him this is the guy you shoved in lockers in high school and you're like you're gonna tell me how to manage this football team that's no. the guy that ran to be my U-Haul <laughs> like, like um excuse me Antonio Pierce he on the extra insurance and fuck a good salesman excuse me Mr. Mr. Pierce there's there's, there's a 47 percent chance you're gonna, you're gonna get the shut up nerd we're we're punting Put it in the hands of our defense. You remember, you remember, you remember Revenge of the Nerds when the Japanese nerd like uh, knocked on a, a Japanese house, mm -hmm. and the I, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't want to just like, come off as like racist or anything. It's Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge, Revenge the of the Nerds, nerds right? So the, the 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 man the the dad of the house came up and he's like, "Nerd!" <laughs> <It's laughs> <the door's face. laughs> Excuse me. I've been sick for a while, actually, too. So, playing hurt today. Well, that tequila will cure a lot of tequila bells. Knock it right out. Uh, well, there's been one pot, one really, really big positive this season, and uh, that's the.
Hey, tight end that will remain nameless out of Kansas City. Get your dirty, filthy paws off my rookie. Yeah, dude. I don't want them commiserating. Like, almost molested him, dude. No way. Hey, you know what? It's that's that, that's that's honestly look. I'm not gonna say his name or anything, but real recognize real, dude. Like that was that was like, all right, man. Like you're the you're the future of this position in this league. There's not a better a better tight end that has a, a better future than than Brock Bowers. I just don't want him touching him. I don't want that. What is Brock Bowers gonna start dating like Taylor Swift's backup dancers now? Like he'll invite no him way, over man. to concerts. He'll, he'll start dating some big booty freaking reggaeton chick. Brock Bowers looks like a dude who would bang like a Taylor Swift looking chick. Just kind of like Brock Bowers is a normal white this girl. Guy I know. Napa Randall. dude, he all football. Guy, I know. Listen, he reminds me of a guy that I know. His name is Randall John Clifford, who's the whitest white sounds, dude I know. Sounds sexy. And and he freaking married a curry Mexican chick. That's what I think he likes. That would be awesome and fun. I just don't get that vibe. So now the dude that that only cares about football? I don't get that vibe from you either. Well, you got to read my vibes better, bro. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) I'm Uh, excited right now. I'm not going to lie. Well, pour me another one, please. Fuck it. Do it. It's that kind of show. We're celebrating. (sighs) I want you to say something wild on this show. I know, right? Imagine if I say something inappropriate. Um, So we're clearly... Nobody. Yeah. Well, that's how you know. That's how we know you've made it. So right, we cancel you for uh, what the hell I say, right? For quoting "Revenge of the Nerds," you get canceled. That's like, all right, Soto finally made it, big time. Mm. Salute, brother. You're not gonna pour another one, dude. Didn't have one with me. Oh, I'm not gonna make you drink cologne. Yeah, what the heck? Sacrilege. This is the one night this week I wasn't gonna drink. How and, sick is this freaking shot glass? And though? the Doyers go and win. Uh, Look at this. This is like it's like a freaking sn- snakeskin. Cheers, sir. Salud. I love LA. It's a lot easier going down the sixth time, I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. So she said. So wait, okay. So so Dodgers just won. Uh, Lakers were twenty one. Kings were twenty fourteen. Was their last one? Um. I don't care about Clippers, Ducks. It's a, there's there's one one of each. Um, and then Raiders got to be next. Eighty one. Next. What? Eighty one. Eighty four. I was six months old. Oh, eighty four. Eighty three season. 80, 1980, January nineteen eighty four. January eighty four. Six months old. I remember it like it was yesterday, vividly. Uh, you know how I'm always talking about. Um, like the quarterback hit rate in the draft is terrible, right? It's like, yeah. it's not good, right? It's like, it's even less, worse when you don't take one. It's, yeah, you're zero. Yeah, it's 100% of the shots you don't take, right? But when you do go, it's not even a matter of like, oh man, you got to make sure you get it right. It's like, you got to make sure you have bullets in your gun, like multiple bullets in your gun. And obviously, the Raiders are really looking like we're getting a top seven ish pick, maybe even better. Couple decent quarterback prospects. That not, still not might like, not be enough. Still might not be enough, right? But it's looking like you know Raiders are going to draft the pick or uh, you know draft the quarterback with the first their first pick. Even then, I still say the Raiders should probably try to like trade for like Anthony Richardson or someone else developmentally something because the hit rate is awful. So our good buddy Mark Mosher put this out there: every quarterback drafted from 2021 to 2023. 2024 is too early. Although, you know, definitely looks like Jaden Daniels is going to be something, but it's been nine games. So let's not, you know, anoint anybody. But from 2021 to 2023, there's basically three, and I would even say Trevor Lawrence is not what they hoped him to be. He might end up being, he's had some good seasons and, you know, playoff win, but he looks more busty than great E right now. He looks more busty than than Pam Anderson. Nice and top heavy. Like that. 
So you look at the 26 quarterbacks drafted between 2021 and 2023. Brock Purdy hit, even though would he have been a hit if he didn't go to the perfect system? We can debate. He's definitely we're going to say hit, but dot dot dot. Uh, C.J. Stroud looks great. C.J. Stroud looks absolutely fantastic. Trevor Lawrence was supposed to even Trevor Lawrence, who's supposed to be the 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 quarterback prospect, could not be better. Zero faults. Got it all going going for him. Even he's kind of falling apart. And then you look at everyone else. Mac Jones has the second most yards of any of the 26 quarterbacks drafted between 2021 and 2023. Mac Jones. Everyone's embarrassed about Justin Fields already in the second team, third most yards. Zach Wilson, everyone said, a full bust, has the fourth most yards. Davis Mills, Kenny Pickett, Sam Howell, Desmond Ritter was picked up, Bryce Young, Aiden O'Connell's in there. All the way down to Kellen Munn, Kyle Trask, Sean Clifford, Clayton. Dude, I thought Ian Book was going to hit, too. Right? Like, this is 26. I don't even know who that is. Yeah, you're you're all about him, right? I remember those at video. You're giving video after video. Ian Ian Book. Next to you. I said book it. Book it. He's Booker T. 26 26 quarterbacks drafted between 2021 and 2023. And you're looking at. CJ Stroud, where you're like, okay, for sure hit. Basically one. Where you're like, okay, yeah, nope. That's a that's a star in the making. That's a franchise quarterback. Everyone else, even Brock Purdy, it had to be the perfect system. Trevor Lawrence looking pretty shitty this season. I, I'm sure one or two of these guys will be much better than they are right this second. You know, there'll be a couple like a bunch of these guys will be in the league for a long time. A lot of them have backups. Some of them will be spot starters. But that's how freaking hard it is to hit drafting a quarterback. So, yeah, let's make sure we draft a high one. Let's let's do everything we can. But we even then, we can't just sit back and be like, all right, there we go. We're done. It's like, no, dude. Pick up pick up other dudes. Trade. If you can get an Anthony, you know, like, um, Anthony Richardson for like a fifth, totally worth it because you, you – Pushing all your chips on a brand new quarterback that you drafted rarely works. Yeah, this is one of those things where we can't follow the mistakes of the past. And even when, even when, uh, like Derek Carr was like at this peak, and there was no question about all about him being the starter on the team, they still never really, they never drafted anyone to develop underneath him. Just a bunch of Tom, Dick, and Harry, and that was a huge mistake. Didn't draft, didn't trade, didn't like have to do something, zero man. development, zero. Yeah. Look, we, we we can get out of this Minshew deal pretty easy, okay? Mm-hmm. And I like Aiden O'Connell, but Aiden O'Connell isn't somebody that you're going to like want to hang your hat on long term. You draft a young guy, and then Aiden O'Connell comes in because the young guy isn't ready or – or whatever, for whatever reason, right? And we're going to be in the same position we were in this year, next year, mm-hmm. okay? And um, we have to figure out a way, because like I, I really like what the Patriots did. They got Drake May with pick three, and then like what the fifth round, uh, they get Milton, mm-hmm. a developmental guy with high end skills and high end traits that they need to coach up. Because that, that guy could be a freaking stud in a couple of years. Maybe you trade him. Maybe you keep him and he comes in. When uh, May goes down, May, May's hurt right now with a concussion. And with so many games, we're going to have 18 games soon. It's going to be it's going to be a lot coming in soon, the next year, the, next, the one after. We're going to have 18 games. You're going to need two strong quarterbacks. Oh, I burnt things. You're going to need two strong quarterbacks. So I don't know that. And it's another one of those things, again, where you can't think about who's the best player on our team. It's how does that, how do these players stack up against other players around the league? And yeah, I like Aiden O'Connell, but he's not a guy that you want to hang your hat on. The position is too important to winning 
to say like, all right, one of our 53 roster spots we've committed to this, to the, like, no, it's just like until the guy is cemented, right? <clears throat> Two seasons of high level play. Like, okay, this is our starter. We still got to make sure our backups developed. We still got to be thinking about the, you know, even then, even then you still got to be kind of always have one eye on a worst case scenario. What happens, right? Worst case scenario. Are we prepared to handle this? Because the, the position is just too important. It's just way too important. It's one roster spot out of 53 and it, but you, you can't look at it that way. You, you just, you just, even if you find the franchise quarterback and you're paying him soon, the number is going to be 70, $75 million a year. Still got to develop. Dude, still got to draft. Start picking up. Hey, this guy didn't work out over here. Here's a sixth round pick. Even if we have a Pro Bowl quarterback, right? Even then, it's just a good the position is too important. You cannot be stagnant at the quarterback position. Yeah, even with 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 18 games, and I know we're only playing 17 now, but trust me, it's going to be 18 soon. With 18 games, with the freak, just the freak athletes you have on defense, just wanting to take your quarterback's head off. And just all the grind of this game, you you need to put uh, the most important player on your team as a football team is your starting quarterback. The second most important player should be your backup quarterback. You should, because that's it's like you're saying, it's that important. Because if that one goes down, it doesn't matter what anyone else does. If your backup is just maybe average to below average, I mean – we weren't lighting the world on fire, even with Aiden O'Connell in the game. And he's an average quarterback, I would say. And we just uh, we need more at that position. So putting more attention on it and you you should you should draft a young quarterback. And I'm not talking about like Carter Bradley. I'm talking about draft a, a dude, right? In the you know, maybe the middle four, five, six ish around there. Every other year at least. Mm -hmm. to upgrade the position just to make sure that you're always getting fresh arms in there and guys that can actually help you that can maybe develop into something that's even better than what you had starting. Because like you said, it is very difficult to find a guy, but it's even more difficult when you don't look for him. And that's why it was so maddening to me why we didn't take a quarterback this entire draft. I understand that the guys that you wanted, the top three guys, the top four guys or whatever, weren't there when you chose in the first round, but there were still quality guys to get later in the draft. And uh, we just didn't feel the need to, I mean, like Eichenberg could turn out to be a nice player, but he's a backup special teams guy, you know, like those are guys and, in the fourth round, fifth round. And, and look back to my, like, we should, we should try to make a move for Anthony Richardson. It's like, okay, let's say like this bad case scenario happens and he's a hit and we draft a guy that hits. You know what a, a starting quarterback we can get in trade? Like let's say we draft let's say hey, bro, we need both of them. We well, need what, both I'm, of these I'm saying like what like, like let's say like we draft Cam Ward, right? For 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 lack, you know, for, let's say we just blah blah. Yeah. Fifth overall, we get Cam Ward. And he hits. Rookie year playing lights out. He's the man, right? Anthony Richardson starts the season and plays lights out for us before Cam Ward comes in. You know what we could get for Anthony Richardson at that point? Right, for a, a guy that like lit it up, but he didn't lose the starting position. It's just look, you drafted Cam Ward fifth overall. He's it's gonna go to him. Uh -huh. We get first rounders for that guy if he hits. You know what I'm saying? Like first rounders for starting level quarterbacks like that. Like that's what I'm saying, man. It's like, well, what if one of them hits? And like, what if they both hit? Good, awesome. That's like the best thing in the problem in the, in the world to have. Having like a starting caliber quarterback, but you drafted a number, you know, a, a top guy overall over him, and you go with the younger, less expensive guy with the longer future. Like, that's awesome. Trade that dude for a king's ransom. But you got to have multiple bullets in the gun with quarterback. You have to. The the hit rate is just too low to just one. Okay, let's figure it out. Let's let's go. Two yeah, more. it's it's um. It's definitely something that it needs to be a priority and it needs to be it needs to have a better plan moving forward. Because look, people I, I saw this this post today on Twitter, and I still call it Twitter. And uh 
it was like no running back, no receivers, no a battle line. Why is nobody blaming Telesco? Okay. Uh, the, the line was drawn in the sand by the previous regime on Josh Jacobs. And it wasn't like we were going to give him a type of deal that's going to erase what happened and the bad taste that he had in his mouth. Because, he I mean, Josh Jacobs couldn't get out of here fast enough. He wasn't hurt the last four games of last year. If you believe that, you're a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, did, he, he, he was done with the Raiders last season. So he wasn't coming back unless you gave him a freaking sweetheart of a deal better than the one he signed. Okay, there's that. The offensive line, we just stated, the offensive line was by and large the same with one upgrade in Jackson Powers Johnson from last year's offensive line. They ended up blocking pretty damn good. Devontae Adams had been wanting to get out for years. We finally let him go. That's a big, big loss as a, as a weapon. The plan for quarterback is the issue and not guys out guys like Jameis winston guys like joe flacco if you want to bridge quarterback get a guy that started some games you know what i'm saying get a guy that was a starting guy get a guy that was a first round pick that has high-end traits um i was okay with getting gardner Minshew because of what we paid him because paying $15 million a year for a starting quarterback is not a lot of money, all right? Mm -hmm. But they were better options out there to be had. We could have we could have had, I mean, I don't think Jameis Winston was a second, the second the, the second string quarterback with Cleveland, right, mm -hmm. uh, to begin the year. And there was, you know, there was better a better plan if you wanted a short bridge. And, and this is the guy that you put out there still should, still should be capable. You know, capable of winning games. Obviously, Gardner Minshew ended up being a poor pick, right? He's just not, whether it's because of Getsy or because of the line, because he's just not that good. Obviously, it didn't work out. For who to blame, we can all differ. It clearly didn't work out. But if, 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 if it would have been Jameis Winston instead, if it would have been Sam Darnold instead, Ritter Nation would still be complaining at the pick. Right? Like... People like Raider Nation would not have been happy for the like, oh, it's Jameis Winston. Oh, Mr. Pick Six. Oh, God. Like, don't act like, don't act like any of these other like cast offs, kind of merry go round quarterbacks you would have been doing backflips for if we signed them. Don't pretend we, we weren't getting Jaden Daniels. It wasn't happening. Zero percent chance. Uh, the top three guys, they weren't budding. No way. It's, it wasn't going to happen. It's been documented. Get they that out of your mind. The moon. They were offered offered the world, and they were not. But the only pe team that would actually listen to you was the Patriots, and they just listened to you long enough to tell you no. So get that out of your mind. Kirk Cousins wasn't coming here. When you're that old, you're not trying to like. Oh, let me like work behind this developing O line. Oh. Uh, an offensive coordinator that was your third choice and a rookie coach. Like he wasn't coming here. He was, it wasn't happening. So outside of that, what was left that you would have been really excited about? Well, who, like who, who, what free agent were you just like banging down the door for? Like nobody, like it wasn't a, it wasn't a quarterback situation for Telesco to come out on top. Now, again, Gardner Minshew didn't work. It was a bad choice, but, I, I don't think any of us were thinking it was going to be the greatest choice or like, hey, you should have went with this other guy. Oh, Sam Darnold would have been a shoe. And I, I can't believe he didn't go Jameis Winston instead of Gardner Minshew. No one was saying that. Nobody was saying that. So in hindsight, yeah, okay, it didn't work out. All right, didn't work. But don't act like it was a no-brainer. Like there was some no-brainer free agent quarterback out there that all of Raider Nation was unanimously rooting for until that's going to pick up. And how about our draft picks? One, two, and three, all hits. How often does that happen? One is poised to be that is offensive player of the year, offensive rookie of the year. Uh, Jaden Daniels, but well, he'll get. I think he'll get rookie. Um, because I always go to the quarterback rookie. Uh, uh, NFL MVP. What's the overall rookie? Anyway, you know, you know what I'm saying. The non-quarterback, like offensive player of the year, it's going to be Brock Bowers, Jackson Powers Johnson. 
concussion issues, but when he's in there, looks pretty damn good. Delmar Glaze, third Glaze, third rounder, holding his own as a starter, as a rookie, looks pretty good. And it's not like the rest of the O line is so remarkable that they're able to like pick up some of their leg work. You know, it's not like you're putting a rookie onto a line of four incredible starters that can we'll give the rookie a hand. Like we'll pick up some of his blocks because we're so good. Like that's not happening. Like pretty damn good draft class. Again, only nine games in, but pretty damn good looking draft class. Like, I don't know why people are complaining about Telesco. I don't, I don't get it. The thing is you can really only realistically expect your first three picks. Like if you get three starters out of a draft, that's a freaking home run draft. Mm. And it looks like we got three starters. The the picks that we should have, what picks one, two, and three, are locked in legit starters for us. And that's, I mean, if even even when uh, when uh, Mumford uh, and uh, who was the other one, Parham, come back, Mumford's played some guard. If he's the best guard out there, he can move in and play some guard. Mm -hmm. We, you know, it's it's a pretty you know, pretty big physical offensive line if you do it that way. And uh, you put JPJ at center. Um, but there's there's a lot to be said for hitting on the picks that you're supposed to hit on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just I – I don't get the hate either. Um, I, I just I, – I, I think a lot of us are so used to having um, – having late round picks play so much for us because the overall roster isn't that great that they think that those players are actually better than they are. Yeah. But no, these first three picks are solid starters. It, it's, it is That's a, res, it is a results based business and the roster isn't good. And so you immediately think who's in charge of the roster, the general manager, and that's Tom Telesco. Okay. Got it. But he had, Two thirds of an off season, three three quarters of an off season, to work on a roster that had been hammered for a decade by terrible roster management from John from from Gruden, terrible drafting from Mayock to Gruden to like the last regime. Like he's picking like there's everyone's wondering why there's no depth on this team because we haven't drafted or handled a, 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 a roster well in a decade. That's why, like, that's why there's no depth. Depth takes time. Depth takes skill. Depth takes development. We haven't been doing it. It's a miracle that, like, the, like this roster doesn't have the ho massive holes in it on defense. The defense doesn't really have holes when everyone's healthy, which is kind of a miracle considering how we've drafted, how bad Gruden was with the roster. Like, that's kind of, that's kind of wild, Soto, that you're like, all right, what's the real, what's the biggest hole on our defense? I, the corners don't tackle great. Like, is that, I mean, that's really like, you're not going like, all right, there's a clear weak spot, you know, it's, which is kind of, kind of a miracle considering how bad this roster has been managed for a while. Yeah. It, it's, there's, there's some reason for optimism. It, it's just the, the, the depth is an issue and we knew that going in and there's not, you can't do much about depth in one year. All you, all you can do is just get upgraded players into onto your team, and that'll naturally just build depth for you. But the depth is an issue, and because of the injuries that we've had defensively, it's taking a toll on us. But even then, guys like Chase on and guys like Snowden and Eichenberg came in there, and you know, and when he had to play, he he did a pretty good job. Polo Mao is in there still. And so there's still some guys off the bench that are coming out and, and, and they're they're playing good ball. Uh, we just need uh, we just need upgrades. You know, Adam Butler's playing really well. So um, it's a it's a process getting there, but we haven't really had a GM like a legit GM in so long. I think people forget that GMs last longer than coaches do. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that because they build long term. Yeah, there's there's content. There's there needs to be continuity. Like 
don't look at a football team as we need a linebacker. I will go get a linebacker. It's all right. This is our linebacker situation in 2024. In 2026, it's going to be this. Let's prepare for it. That's that's how a good GM handles it. It's not like, oh, man, we need this guy right now. Let's go draft him in the second round. It's it's predicting where the holes are going to be. And then just like we're talking about with quarterback, it's multiple bullets in the gun. In two seasons from now, we're not going to be able to afford this linebacker that's currently our starter. So let's pick up this guy that might be able to work in the fifth. Let's sign this guy who's a backup. We can get him for $2 million. If neither one of those guys pan out, we'll get maybe a little bit, we'll commit a little bit more resources the next season. Like that's how it's approached. That's not, not, oh man, we have these giant holes. Let's throw everything we have to fill those holes. That is poor roster management. It's predicting where the holes are going to be, predicting where the strengths are going to be, and building multiple seasons ahead, knowing what the cap's going to be, knowing what the contracts are. That's proper roster management. And that's what Telesco's doing. He didn't throw everything into like, let's fix all these holes right now. Let's sign whatever quarterback quarterback doesn't fit for a ton of money just because we need a guy right now. It's like, no. Best player available in the draft? Christian Wilkins. All right, four-year deal. Awesome. Next to, okay, we'll commit one big one there. Proven commodity. He was cut for the right reasons, only because the Dolphins couldn't afford him. Well, he was cut because he was hurt or, or getting worse. It was like, no, he was cut. He was a free agent for the exact right reasons he wanted to be a free agent. He's awesome but the team just couldn't afford him because they had too many paying too many guys. That's the guy you go after. That's the guy you commit to. And until he got hurt, it was the right choice, right? Like that was the one big swing because everything fell into place. Position of need, right type of guy. We're going to be a team that's going to be a defense that's dependent on the defensive line. It all worked out. Don't, don't throw everything into every hole. That is, that is a waste of resources when the hit rate isn't great. And it's uh, a salary caps, uh, a league. It's, predict where the holes are going to be and you slowly start to fill it multiple bullets in the gun yeah it just um i mean there's 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 two parts there's i mean there's three parts of it there's three d's there's discovery there's draft and then there's development mm -hmm. and if uh, there's any uh, there's any weak link in, in that chain you're going to have problems creating not only um high-end players throughout your roster but you're gonna you're gonna lack in depth too, and uh, you know it takes a lot of people to do it, man. It takes a lot of people to do it, and a lot of people to do it right uh, to be to to all kind of have the same viewpoint on what what the team is looking for and and what traits you're looking for from these players. Because I mean, if you don't discover these players, you don't you don't know to draft them, right? If, if you're in a championship window. You know what I mean? You're like, okay, let's throw everything into this season. You know what I mean? Like if you're in a championship window, different story, right? Let's, let's trade away draft picks. Let's try to win right now. Let's push the cap but further down. You have to identify the guys that you want to get. Yeah. Because not, not all free agents pan out. Mm. All right. Well, Sunday, uh, we won't be watching quality football because we'll be watching Raiders Bengals. A couple, teams, a couple losing records. Bengals still seven point favorites in cincinnati early window over under is 46 and a half um it's looking like t higgins and orlando brown are day-to-day -day. their second best receiver and their best offensive lineman their right left left tackle left tackles brown right uh that's gonna be good news for us um joe burrow needs both those guys he really needs both those dudes to to be peak but um still i i don't think the Bengals are as bad as their their three and five records say I, I i i don't think they're that terrible well i don't think we're as bad offensively as we've been playing but it's the same issue we've just been making a ton of mistakes offensively and they they just make a ton of mistakes defensively is what their issue is they can yeah. score points still but they just give up a ton of points so we still have to take advantage of those mistakes offensively in order to be able to you know, it's like their weakness versus our weakness, and then our strength versus their strength. So we'll have to see. Uh, Bengals, 89.8 .8 yards per game rushing. That's the fifth worst. They cannot run the ball. But luckily for them, Joe Burrow is as advertised. 235 yards per game passing, seventh best 
Joe Burrow is top seven in basically every major passing category. Touchdowns, yards per game, um, interceptions, quarterback rating. Like he's he has no run game, and the defense, like you said, keeps blowing it. He's missing his second, his second best wide receiver's been out. He just lost his best lineman. So he's it's he's carrying a lot. He's carrying a lot, but he is still that guy, despite the frosted tips. Yeah, he's that dude for sure. Um on our end. Keep tight, right? Get after him. We haven't been blitzing hardly at all. Be nice to get uh, Joe Burrow down a couple times. Tyree Wilson actually has been playing semi decent in back to back games. Again, our bar for him is extremely low, but he had the only sack of the game last week. And and that um, sack was actually a good use of his hands. Mm-hmm. He got off the bull rush. He actually well, no, he yeah. faked the bull rush and he shucked the guy's hands to the side. He beat him clean around the corner. It's a nice play. So let's get after him. I think if you get after him, that takes a while. You know, obviously it's easier said than done, right? It's no brainer with most almost every quarterback in the league, right? You you can get after him and disrupt things. But um, here's the problem with Joe Burrow: you can hit him all freaking day, and as long if you don't knock him out of the game, he's still extremely dangerous. He is mm-hmm. unflappable, dude. The 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 year that he went to the Super Bowl. He was sacked the most out of any quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. It, it didn't matter. He still got up and he still dusted himself off and he still made plays. So you got to be ready to take advantage of a mistake if your de- if your defensive line can cause one from Burrow because just hitting him is not gonna you're not gonna rattle him. This this dude is he's that dude, man. He is that dude. Like this team is not doing well, but it's not for his play. Put it this way. It's one thing for a quarterback, for like Brock Purdy to take the Niners to the Super Bowl. It's one thing for like Jimmy Garoppolo to come in for a season and lead the Patriots to a great season. It's another thing to take the Cincinnati fucking Bengals. Flip the script. To the Super Bowl. Like franchises aren't blank canvases where you can just install players and it's going to play out. There's franchises that are run fantastic, and there are franchises that are run dog shit. The Cincinnati Bengals are a franchise run dog shit. Their practice facility, they have to walk across a highway to get to their practice facility to practice. Like decades long of being inept and terrible. And in comes Joe Burrow. And yeah, they were able to draft his, you know, his best friend, you know, Jamar Chase right after that. That that helped too, because he got hurt and they got another high draft pick. But Essentially, Joe Burrow came in there, not with like a coach that's really all that amazing, not like a defense that's lighting the world on fire. They went to the Super Bowl, they had three number one wide receivers and Joe Burrow. And he got them to the Super Bowl. Like that's like that is incredible. That's incredible. Hey, do me a huge favor. Open up your Twitter and check out the the photo that Rory sent us. Rory shared a post. That's freaking money, dude. (laughs) That is so freaking money. (laughs) God damn it, guard, dude. But I want to hate you more. You you go and do one of this and totally redeem yourself. (laughs) She tasted like cigarettes. That's so sweet playing Lieutenant Dan. He just bought himself another season with the Raiders. I take it back. He's our starter next season. Extend him. Why, why is too good of a costume? Up on the freaking left, though. <laughs> he looks a little too excited to be at that right? costume party. He's like, man, Gardner, you're looking really good. Really, really good. He's all, you in a wheelchair, you found my kink. <laughs> <laughs> I had that is a sweet God, oh, that's so sweet. That's a sweet costume. Who could have played um, Forrest Gump to be that to be his lieutenant Dan? Do I think Bowers could have Bowers or or Bowers. no the haircut freaking uh, yeah it's too good of a haircut. Uh, uh, been... Aiden O'Connell, yeah Aiden O'Connell. That would the two quarterbacks too perfect. Oh yeah, they've been too perfect. 
That's the one costume because Gardner Minshew is Lieutenant Dan. That would have been great if he didn't if he didn't play uh, Farva. He does, I, you know I, I, mean? I know that he has a short sleeve dress shirt. <laughs> he's he's he strikes me as the guy that has a short sleeve dress shirt. <laughs> Ready to do some water windbags? Yeah, man. I don't. I, I need to stop drinking. I no, you don't. You need to keep drinking. Master says turnovers. Semicolon. Some correlation when you aren't beating teams and forcing them to play catch up equals fewer turnovers. Yeah, that makes sense. Also, our linebackers and DBs are generally soft relative to many teams. When was last time Merrick forced a fumble? LOL, Spillane, Diablo play with heart, but aren't physically imposing. I don't know uh, about that. Well, I, I, that first statement is true, right? Like if you, if you're beating teams, they get a little bit more desperate and therefore there's a higher chance, you know, a lot of teams are throwing him. There's a few reasons for that. There's the desperation, but also you're taking them out of their game plan too. And they become more yeah. predictable. So I get that. You're getting like you're getting we're not getting a lot of Hail Marys thrown at us. We're not getting a lot of like you know, um we don't we don't get to just run the clock out because we're winning, which lowers the chances of us committing turnovers you know we're the ones in desperation mode on offense usually because we're losing and so that opens up stuff like like that's there's that's a big part of it that's true like that's that is a correct element to where the issue is um but also yeah i mean who's really laying like fumble jarring hits and then who's recovering them like we're just not in position the yeah. tackling's not been good tackling has not been good well, I, I don't want to say the tackling hasn't been good from the linebackers. Definitely from the DBs, it's been an issue. From the corner, yeah. from one corner specifically, it's been an issue. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I've seen Paul Amal freaking flat back a couple of dudes uh, the last few weeks. So, Spil I wouldn't Spilane necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say – Man, burp stinks. I wouldn't necessarily say that the DBs are, are soft. I would say that one DB had some issues tackling, but the last game Jack Jones did uh, get in there and, and uh, have some good tackles. So, I mean, it's not just the, the, the force of the hit. It's almost like in fighting. It's like, it's not really like the, how hard the punch hits you, but it, if you don't see it coming, those are the ones that really mess you up. Yeah. If you don't see a guy coming to hit, to tackle you, and, and and he hits you with a good tackle. That's that's what's gonna. You're not ready for. You're not bracing for it. It's the punches so, you don't see coming. Then I guess even if it's not a hard punch, you're just like, dude, where the fuck did that come from? You have, can't brace yourself. Maybe you have your mouth a little open, and he kind of jars you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Daniel M. Thirty four thirty four. Luke Getze making Bo Hardigree look like Kyle Shanahan in comparison. <laughs> Who'd you rather have, Bo or Getze? Well, the thing with Bo is we don't really know what, what kind of offense he'd run because he was running Josh McDaniel's offense, just calling different plays out of his offense. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it can't be any worse. Are we at that point? Do we have the worst offensive coordinator in football? I think so. Uh, I don't know, dude. Freaking Jacksonville's pretty bad. Um, Carolina's, Browns, even though they put money put up bad. against us. Carolina's pretty bad. But yeah, probably. We're in a conversation, which isn't fun. Well, I mean, you, you take a look at like the quarterbacks and the coordinator. Like, yeah, we'll probably have the worst situation. I mean, offensive coordinator, quarterback, running back. No question. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're, we're no question. No question the worst in the NFL. Not not, I mean, not even a shout out the down. Even the Panthers have Chuba Hubbard. Yeah. Rambo Adventures, O-I-1-M-N. Here's the bad news. We went from number five in draft order to number seven, even with the loss. The head of Raiders drafting first-round quarterbacks also, Panthers, Titans, Jets, Saints. Teams right behind us drafting first-round quarterbacks, Browns, Giants, Rams. If Raiders are not in top two or three, no chance to get Ward or Sanders. Cheers. Maybe. Maybe. Um, the Saints drafted obviously a quarterback, but late, late rounder. But other than that, it seems like yeah, 
everyone else is going to be drafting quarter. Like Titans can't be happy with their second year. No way. Panthers have already benched. Um, I think I think he might get another year. Browns, they're still super tied to Mr. Hansy financially. But ultimately, dude, first off, I think he might get better that he's hurt now. He'll get more massages. Mm-hmm. Get his head I right. He might get better. Both heads right. But either way, even if you have him on the your bench making all that money, I don't think I don't think his his money's gonna be an issue because he's mm-hmm. it's just like it's just like him being hurt. You're yeah. paying them still. It doesn't matter. The Giants are in the same position this season as they were last season, and they didn't go quarterback. Um, oh, they, they they can't stick with Daniel Jones like another year, dude. There's no way. There's no way they'll do that. They're in the exact same position. No, they just – One year they, more. An, another year of him not playing well. Like, There's no way, dude. There's no way they can stick with him again. All right, well, that's it for us. Um, happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah, big ha- We're recording this Wednesday night, but you'll be listening to this on a, on a Thursday. Big Halloween plans? Going wild? You going to smash some pumpkins? No, home run, I usually just kick it. We watch a couple of movies, make some dinner. No, no, we don't have any kids here where I live, so nobody comes around. We had candy. I'm always going to have some candy because you never know. But the last, I mean, how long have I lived here? Five years? No one's come. I mean, 365 days a year, you have candy for kids. I don't really eat candy. House. I don't, honestly, I don't eat candy. I'm not a really big sweets guy. You used to always have your uh, jelly beans before the show. No, you know, those, are, those are my Skittles. Oh, Skittles. Okay. Yeah, I had some Skittles, but I stopped eating those. I don't have a sweet tooth at all, but what's crazy, I do a dry January every year, right? I don't drink any booze the whole month of January. Two weeks in, I start craving sugar. Well, you know, my body's used to booze. Yeah, my body's so used to the alcohol, the booze, like the, the sugar and alcohol. It's like, oh, it's like, where is it? Like, I've, n- I've never had a sweet tooth since I was a little, little kid. I like junk food. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like a health nut. Like, I, I'd rather pound like a chili cheese dog than have oh, I'm about to say chili cheese fries right now sound good oh dude yeah give me or dude a am pm taquito just like the shittiest junk food uh hot pockets you're, you're the bagel dogs pocket. oh yeah those are good uh, pigs in a blanket but like they've been sitting in that heater for three days like oh yeah give me some give me some real shitty junk food over sweets any day until about halfway through january i'm just double fisting twizzlers <laughs> Uh, all right. The uh, post game show solo will be Soto again. He's a one man show. He's kind of like Brock Bowers on our offense. I'll be on a plane. I'll be on a plane heading back from Canada. Um, but I'll be watching in spirits. Maybe I might be able to jump on late. Doubtful. We'll see. But until then, knock on wood if you're with me. Hey, hey, you made it to the end of our video. Great job. I know you want more. Go ahead and click the next video. And if you're feeling crazy, Go ahead and subscribe.